So good evening, everyone. Uh, we're supposed to be in Boulder, Colorado, and it would be morning, but uh, Brooke and I, as, as she just mentioned, we're still in Zambia. We just loved it so much being in Africa at this time, almost feeling safer here than in North America, that we decided to extend our stay and continue on to Uganda. But more on that a little bit later, this webinar is trying to relay our experience over the last two weeks here. And of course, Nick Aslan is joining us from Zambian Ground Handlers. He's been uh, helping us put our trip together. And I'm going to ask Nick to tell us a little bit about, you know, or just a recap of what the situation is on the ground, who's flying in here, where can you go to, everything like that. And then I've got a short presentation from our photos. Many of you may have seen those on social over the last couple of, you know, the last two weeks. Uh, but I'll share some of that and Brooke and I will just kind of talk you through our experience and what is <laughs> on the ground right now when you visit Zambia. So with that, I'm going to hand you over to Nick and uh, Nick, take us away. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Brooke. And thank you for everyone for tuning in. Um, what I will do now for a few minutes is just cover the basics uh, about the logistics of traveling to Zambia now and in the next few months. Um, and, uh, uh, and then Johan will, will give his presentation about their experiences in, here in Zambia in the last couple of weeks. And hopefully we'll have a slightly more extensive uh, question and answer session at the end. Uh, so do put your questions in, in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen um, and we'll try and, we'll try and cover all of that. So in, we'll try and make it as interactive as, as possible uh, because I know different people have, have different questions that they need answered. We got all the answers, we just need to know what, what, what you are wanting to hear. So in brief, Zambia is open. Um, please send your clients, come yourselves, like, like you had a brook had. Um, we've been issuing tourist visas to anybody with a negative COVID test that is no more than two weeks old. We've been doing that now for two or three months. Um, we have various airlines flying into Zambia. We have domestic schedules throughout the country. Uh, and there are enough camps open in the different tourist destinations, the different national parks, to be able to put together a complete, well-rounded Zambian itinerary. So all boxes ticked so far. And let me just drill down and give you a few details on that. So as I say, the, the, the most important thing is the borders are open. And the only requirement that Zambia places on its uh, arriving tourists is that you should have a COVID test no older than two weeks. There's no quarantine. You will have your temperature taken as you come into the airport um, and they'll take you aside if you have a temperature or if you are exhibiting obvious uh, symptoms of COVID. Assuming that is not the case, uh, you'll be able to buy your visa as you normally would, $50 per person, and you're welcome to Zambia. Um, <clears throat> international airlines that are flying into Zambia at the moment, we've had Ethiopian flying on a daily basis from Addis Ababa throughout the, 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 the last six months. So they've really done very well. They've supported the destination. Um, and they do not, importantly, they do not put any restrictions to travel. Uh, all they want you to do is to meet the requirements stipulated by the country you are entering. So if they're gonna fly you to Zambia, all they wanna check before you board their plane is that you have that required test that is, that is no more than two weeks old. Emirates started flights uh, uh, they've been flying all of September. Uh, they are slightly different because in order to transit Dubai Airport, which you always would when you fly out of the South on Emirates, you have to have a COVID test that is no more than 96 hours old. That requires you therefore to have a test in Zambia before uh, you leave the country to fly home. Uh, more on that later because I took Johan and Brooke this morning to a facility here in Lusaka and they had their COVID test for their departing flight uh, in two days time. So they will be able to tell you more about that now. So those are the two main airlines. We also have Kenyan Airways flying in from uh, Nairobi. And rather excitingly, now that South Africa has announced uh, its borders are open, uh, slightly restricted, and we had news on that literally uh, an hour or so ago, uh, but ProFlight, the Zambian domestic carrier, will start their schedules to Johannesburg from Lusaka tomorrow morning their first flight. So that's an exciting new development. It's the first time ProFlight have offered flights from Lusaka to Johannesburg. 
Um, at the moment, we haven't heard any news from SAA as to whether they will resume flying or not. So the, the, the ability to connect Johannesburg and Lusaka on ProFlight uh, and also on, um, uh, on Airlink uh, is, is quite important for future ITUs. Within the country, as I say, we've got domestic schedules offered by ProFlight, um, reduced schedules certainly, but they've got two or three flights a week to um, Fui in South Rangwa to uh, Livingston. Uh, they're not scheduling flights into the Low Zambezi at the moment uh, because there isn't enough demand for that, but they have released their 2021 schedules uh, and those are what we're working around at the moment. All our 21 itineraries are, are being uh, matched with the the schedules that ProFlight have, have released already for next season, so that's that's pretty good. Um, in those different areas, the Lower Zambezi probably has a few more options for camps at the moment than the South Rangel because it is fairly easy to get there from Lusaka. And uh, for in the last couple of months, these camps have really been relying entirely on domestic travel, uh, and it's been an opportunity for those of us living in Lusaka to get to the bush and to stay in these lovely camps that are uh, normally full of all of your clients at this time of year, so the local residents don't get much of a look in. But that's changed a bit in the last couple of months. Um, so a number of options open in the Lower Zambezi. The South Luangwa is limited to Chinzombo, to uh, Fui Lodge, Kapamba, one of the Bush Camp Company camps is open, and remote Africa safaris have got Tafika open, and their camp in the North Luangwa, Tequila. Um, some guests going in there at this time. So, uh, the Kafui, there's one camp open in the northern Busanga Plains area of the Kafui, uh, and several options in the central area. Again, uh, an easy drive from Lusaka, so just three to four hours transfer by road from Lusaka to the central uh, part of the Kafui at the moment. Uh, and Livingston, there's a number of options there. So, as I say, Johan and Brooke will come on to give you a little bit more detail about what they've been doing in those different areas in the last few weeks. Um, and, and that is certainly what, what we're doing at the moment for people that are booking and confirming their travel for the next couple of months. Um, we are able to put together full itineraries, albeit that our choices of camps and the choices of days that scheduled flights might operate are limited. Uh, it, we, we know the, the, the parameters and are able to create itineraries. Um, so that's what's happening in the country. What else? Um, what else am I supposed to be covering here, Johan? I think I think that's we're yeah. going to talk a bit about the, the COVID tests. Um, uh, but shall we move on to to your experiences? In the last couple of weeks? Sure, absolutely. And um, just because of what you just covered now, there's a couple of questions that I'm going to answer um, before we get into the presentation. Um, Jim, in terms of the PCR test for Ethiopian, I'm just going to answer that now because no, Ethiopian as an airline is not requiring COVID tests before you fly with them. And that has nothing to do with the country that you're in as well. I flew out of Kenya on Ethiopian and they did not require the test. And because I was flying Ethiopian out of Kenya right back into the US, which does not require the test, I did not have to get a COVID test in Kenya. Now, Yohan and I were originally scheduled to fly out of Zambia on Ethiopian. That's how we flew in as well. We would have not had to have gotten the test. Because we changed our plans to go to Uganda, which does require the test, and we have to do that. Well, you could have flown, we could have flown on Ethiopian into Uganda. We would have had to get the test then, not because of Ethiopian, because of Uganda, but actually the connection is much simpler for us on Kenya Air. So we're flying Kenya Air to Uganda. That's why we got the test, because Uganda requires it. So Ethiopian as a carrier is not requiring um, PCR tests. Right, well, let me walk you through a little bit uh, of our experience and uh, Nick will in the in meantime, you know, look at uh, some of the questions as well. And then we'll answer those, you know, when we get to the end of it. So as you, many of you know, Brooke did a trip to Kenya a couple of weeks ago while I did a bike trip in Colorado. And uh, when she came back, 
she basically said, we have to go to Zambia. We have to show people that it's, that you can go there, that you, that it's safe, the, 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 you know, getting on the plane, getting on the domestic flights. And then when you're on the ground that you can have a good experience. So we kind of last minute put this trip together and decided, okay, we're going to, uh, you know, fly over. So many of us have done some of the domestic flying experiences now, and some of you have done international. So we mask up, we clean, we social distance. The airports are pretty empty. I'm not going to go too much into the flight experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the airports are not that busy. The planes typically are not that full. Although on our flight over to Ethiopia, because it was just pre the Ethiopia New Year, uh, you know, a good part of the plane was actually full. Um, but with the masks on, with good filters, with all these things, we felt safe. Now, once we got to Zambia, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the way they've been running airports. Because, you know, most of us kind of like, you know, airports in Africa, we kind of roll our eyes. But Zambia has got it so nicely worked out, so well set up, both in Lusaka and Livingston, basically every airport, they, like this guy at the door, just checked that you had your COVID test, that it says PCR and negative on it, and that it's within the, the, the right, you know, time frame. And then we went through, uh, oops, let me just click on here. We went through to where they basically took your temperature with a infrared uh, temperature, that it all looks like a gun. And that thing you'll see all over Zambia, because even getting into the supermarket in Lusaka, everywhere they do check your temperature and on your arm, on your neck, on your forehead, you know, wherever you prefer. The airport is well set up and so has all the airports been. Lots of sanitizer around, even wipes so you can wipe down the handle of your cart, social distancing signs and you know, on the chairs, around luggage. So really have everything together very well. Everyone's wearing masks. And then the domestic flights, we actually had an interview with the director of flight operations from ProFlight, who really walked us through in detail how they clean, when they clean, everything that happens behind the scenes. And I'm very confident in the way that they're approaching this and how serious they are taking this. So very much like a domestic flight in the US, except like even right at the cabin door, someone is again disinfecting your hands. And I felt very comfortable on the flight and everyone was wearing masks, you know, us included, uh, as I would in any enclosed space. And then when you get to the safari lodges, so we started our trip off in Livingston and we went to Sindabizi Island there. And I, my overall feeling is like you have about 98% of the experience you would normally have at the safari lodge. The only difference is they ask you to wash your hands when you come in. Uh, the staff are wearing masks when they greet you. Every time you come back off an activity, they'll give you hand sanitizer or ask you to wash their hands, your hands. So they wash their hands. They actually get checked three times a day, their temperature, and you get checked every time you come in. But I mean, it's really a rounding error in inconvenience. It doesn't det detract from your trip at all. And um, when I come to the safari areas, the flip side is like, there's no one else out there. So you're, your lodge experience is 98%, but your safari experience is 200% because you have the whole park for yourself. So Sindabizi, we always love it. Most safari lodges are very open, very free flow. There's lots of ventilation. So, you know, I feel literally safer in Africa than I do in the US. And very importantly, the guest experience on the ground is just as good as it always has been when we go on safari. Because we're all going safari because we love the experience. We don't, we don't want to spend our time and money on something that feels like a hospital visit or something like that. So the exact same experience that we've had before on safari, you can have on safari right now with a few very basic precautions that does not detract at all from your overall experience. We did a couple of activities. Some of you following us on social may have seen some of those already while we're in the Vic Falls area. Uh, the addition to the activities has been the hand washing in the top there and typically signing into a register so that they know that you've been there. And then obviously the staff wearing some masks. The guys will swim out with you onto the falls in the open air. They're obviously not gonna wear masks, but I felt safe and distanced in those uh, instances. 
I want to, sorry, just, I thought of something when we were looking at that photo now. There were multiple times when we had to give our information, as you see me doing here, and part of the information that they were asking for was our passport number. Now, we always are used to having our passport when we check into a lodge, but I don't normally travel around with it when we're going to do an activity, especially something like Livingston. So what we ended up doing was taking a photograph of our passport so that we had it on our phone because we always had our phones. So just as kind of a trick for your clients that are traveling over here, tell them to take a picture of their passport because they are gonna be asked for more information than normal for these activities um, just because of tracing, contact tracing. Good point, yeah. And then we, from uh, Livingston, we actually flew to South Luangwa. And this is the new camp that Green Safaris that I now work with is building, very early stages of building. And uh, the, the camp is called Shawa after this guy, Jacob Shawa, who's a very hospitable guide and well known in the Luangma Valley. So in the few, near future, we'll tell you more about that camp. But then we spent the night at Mfui Lodge from Bush Camp Company. And it was just such a lovely experience. We got to see the lodge after they've recently renovated it. Uh, they treated us to a couple's massage. So I know some countries are not allowing massage, but they are in Zambia, although the therapist will be masked up the whole time. We even uh, you know, experimented with their photographic vehicle, which is always done as a private vehicle, which is a, would be guaranteed for clients. And as you can see there with the guide wearing a mask, that's how they start out. And then it's up to the guest. If they're comfortable in the open air and say, you know what, you can drop your mask, we're fine here, um, then they will drop it. And if you don't want to, then I'll keep it up. So the guest is very much in control of that experience of how comfortable they feel. And what I found with most guests, once they're in the lodge and it's open and you can easily socially distance and in open air environments, most people drop the mask and, you know, put it in their pocket and just really put it on, you know, when they're in an enclosed space. We also spent a night at Chinzombo, a very similar experience. We were fortunate enough to stay here two years ago and this experience was every bit as nice as the last experience we had with a bit of mask wearing in between. And again, I can't reiterate the animal viewing experience. I mean, we spent all day in that um, Fui area, two days in a row, animal viewing, and we never saw another vehicle. You know, sad for the industry because it should be high season, there should be a number of vehicles there. But some of these areas that maybe have more vehicles than we maybe would like in a perfect setting, this is the year. I mean, if you have clients who are avid photographers or avid safari goers and have the flexibility and can you know, travel in the next month or two while it's still high season, I mean, they will have a once in a lifetime opportunity to see these parks you know, as they were 40 years ago you know, without anyone else around. I mean, we spent time with this leopard, with lions, with, we saw everything, and it's definitely the best experience I've ever had in South Luangwa. And then we flew back to Lusaka, and we were actually met by uh, the guys from Ila Safari Lodge in central Kafui, who picked us up in a nice uh, Land Rover and drove us over. And as Nick mentioned earlier, the central Kafui part is kind of nice because it's a three to four hour drive, depending from where you start and what time of day, from Lusaka. So it's also a good value proposition for many people. It's actually a lovely lodge there. I mean, that's very, I mean, the lodge is super comfortable. And it was the same experience there. You know, when you're greeted, when you arrive, you're wearing masks, and then it's up to you and the guide, uh, you know, how often you want to. They've got a very unique electric boat out there that we can go out on the river. And you know, things happen behind the scenes, you know, behind the boat you can see chairs on the dock. So if you come back, they actually take the chairs off the boat and they clean them and sterilize them before they get used on another river safari. So there's a lot of things behind the cleaning happening behind the scenes. We had a lovely trip on the Kafui there. We saw buffalo, even a lion on the banks and lots of elephants. And at the bottom there are the community projects and community gardens that Eli is running as part of Green Safaris. And it was nice to see and stop in there. They've decided, just like the guys in, in uh, Mfui area, that you know, despite everyone having a hard time, obviously, 
we're going to continue supporting these community projects. We're going to pull through with this. This is the one thing we're not changing. So it's really heartening to see that everywhere in Zambia. And this is a good time, actually, when Johan was talking about how they're cleaning, for instance, the chairs on the boat, to just quickly mention as well that all of the different vehicles that you might be in, so the boats, um, transfer vehicles, uh, safari vehicles, everything by kind of um, Zambian mandate has been lowered in terms of the capacity of the people that are on those vehicles. So if it was a typical boat, boat that could handle eight, now it's six. If it's a vehicle that could have had um, six, now it's four. So they're making sure that when you don't have a fully private experience, that you're still social distanced and that you still have plenty of space. So they're doing those things as well on top of all of the cleaning, unless you are with a family or a group where you want to have more people on the boats and in the vehicles. Yeah, definitely. So we kind of left uh, one of my favorite places for last on this trip, and that was going down to Sausage Tree Camp in the Lower Zambezi. Uh, always an amazing experience. I've actually never been in peak season because, you know, us in the industry, we tend to go around trade show time or, you know, shoulder seasons. And I mean, the sheer amount of elephants, the sheer amount of buffalo, hippo right in front of you, this room that we stayed in, I hope you can see Brooke under our little pictures there. Um, yeah, in the swimming pool, the elephants cross in and out of the river right next to our room there, you know, maybe 10 times a day. Uh, really wonderful animal viewing experiences, very comfortable rooms. And they've actually got, uh, they guarantee the flights to and from the lodge if you do a four night stay. And have also gone out and put out longer stay packages. I mean, they had to pry us away from this lodge after four nights. We could have stayed another four. So Jason has put in really nice packages where, you know, your fifth and sixth and seventh night goes down to like $300 a night. It was unbelievable value given to this time of the year. And yeah, I mean, there's always animals in, on the islands in front of the lodge this time of the year. This was our breakfast setting just about every day. We did fantastic canoeing on the Chifangulu Channel there. Lots of wildlife uh, around as well. And the famous lunches in the middle of the river. Yeah, so since we all knew each other, you know, we're comfortable, we're open, you know, we didn't wear masks on this or on our fishing excursions. But the reality is the experience here that we had was exactly the same as we've had three or four or five times before visiting this area. And that's the message to get over to people is with a few basic precautions to keep you safe, we can make sure you have a beautiful experience. There's a wonderful, you know, 25 meter swimming pool and sausage tree and potato bush always guarantees a private vehicle. So this is not even an issue here. You will never be with other people on a vehicle, the same with a boat, everything like that. So you can very, very easily stay away from other people. And of course, you know, have the basic precautions around the lodge as well. And again, I can't stress the animal being enough. You know, we spend an hour and a half with these two leopards. This one actually had a baboon kill up a tree that it later dragged down and ate right in front of us. And no one else. There was never another vehicle. We never saw another vehicle. We saw one or two boats in the distance on the river, but on the, the game drives, we never came across another safari vehicle. And that is just a golden opportunity, a once in a lifetime opportunity, even though this area have low densities on other years as well. And I'm gonna ask Brooke to just walk us a little bit through Lusaka and what it's like to get a COVID test. We just <laughs> fresh off that experience. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is actually, we were at latitude 15 when we first came in as well. So this was a little bit earlier in the trip. And one of the things that I love about this hotel specifically is that it is so diverse. So I said this earlier, you know, if you have guests that are coming in and they need to do a quick overnight, and this is just where they're going to settle in, get one of the rooms. That's great. But if they then are staying longer, like Yohan and I are at the end of a trip, we're in one of the suites. We've got a full um, you know, living room, kitchenette even. So because we're gonna be here for a couple of nights, you can definitely move your guests around as well. This particular hotel has 
various pools, a spa, a gym, workspace. I mean, that's where we're sitting now. If you're a guest of the hotel, you have complimentary access to their WeWork area. It's called The Works. So um, beautiful property. It's like an art gallery unto itself. It showcases many of the best Zambian artists. Very funky. Um, you know, we love the signage, but amazing staff, great food, really comfortable. And then also very centrally located to all of the different things that you can do within Lusaka. And there really are a lot of great things to do here. So that's why I just want people to know that if they have to stay for a COVID test, it's not like a forced frustration. It's more like we can make a really exceptional trip happen for them. Um, this starts to show some of the art that you're going to see. I mean, I think that Johan is probably going to spend half of the day tomorrow wandering through this property, just looking at all of the art. It really is such a hip urban chic boutique hotel we love staying here and actually we're going to be staying at the latitude zero when we are up in uganda as well and then they also have one at um in lilongwe in um uh, malawi so really fun funky hotels you just get more of a sense of you know what they offer here and actually in the background here you see me starting to interview Nicholas and he oversees all of the hotels within Africa and I mentioned that because all of you that are on this call with us now I'm going to assume get our trip reports and the trip reports as Jan kind of alluded to earlier are going to have full video interviews with all of the different people that we met with so that the things that we're telling you you also hear from them firsthand um, and some of those are three minutes some of them are six minutes uh, we even spoke with the director of the facility that's doing the COVID tests today um, along with as Jan mentioned the director of operations from uh, pro flight. So lots of really good information coming your way from the people that are on the ground here. But I mean, come on, I could hang out here all day. It really is just such a fun little place. That's our room. And then outside of the hotel, so um, all of you know us very well. I would say at this point, you know that on top of animal viewing and safari and the activity and the adventure, we really do actually love the urban centers in Africa and we love the art and the artists, the designers, the culinary experience. Uh, we went to this really fun Mexican restaurant in town with Nick and Carol earlier in our stay called Cantina. Um, there's a funky little place called Zambine. It's a great place. It's a little coffee shop um, where we'll go for salad and local Zambian coffee and also it's next to Yahan's probably now favorite butcher for Druverse and Biltong. So lots of little places that you can also go out and work if you want. This happens to be the 37D gallery. It's literally within walking distance to the hotel. And um, it again, it covers so many of the most remarkable Zambian artists. It's a great place to wander around. And they have an outdoor cafe and a lot of uh, really nice space and internet as well. So I never kind of shy away from spending a couple of nights in an urban environment after my time in an African country, because you know what? Now we're going to upload all of our photos. We're to do more social i'm writing the trip reports it's just a fun way to kind of close out the trip we also today went to the oh my goodness uh lechway no uh nick help me ha huh? is it lechway just on yeah the Le lechway trust uh, thank you lechway trust my goodness i'm not used to talking so much these days the Letwe Trust um, Art Collection. So this is a beautiful little complex, actually, that Nick's wife, Carol, who is a remarkable artist unto herself, helped to set up and to develop. It's a private collection. It's not where you're going to go to buy art, but it's a private collection that showcases, again, the best of Zambian artists. And it's this beautiful space, as you can see. You can spend as much time as you want there. There's an outdoor sculpture garden, and then there's also another great little restaurant and cafe. And when we were there, you know, there lots of locals hanging out doing their business there's a couple of little offices in that area so I always like to go out of my way to feel like I'm a part of the local community we met with some artists I of course met with my favorite designer here and I'll also say that if you have people that want to shop and have something made for them another reason to bookmark your trip meet with them at the beginning they can tailor make things for you and then drop it off for you before you take off at the end of your stay 
This is the Lusaka Collective, um, kind of new to Lusaka. It is a um, project that these two women started to basically showcase more craft artisans from all around Zambia. I think upwards of about 70 different people are represented here. Now some that you might be able to buy when you're out in the field. Um, my necklace is from Mulberry Mongoose, and you can go and visit Mulberry Mongoose in South Luangwa. They are open. I'm bringing back masks from Tribal Textiles. Many of you, I think, have actually ordered yours already. Um, I'll get in touch with you when I'm back in the States, and if anybody else wants to have some, I am bringing them back. It all goes right to Tribal Textiles. Again, they're based in South Luangwa, but they're carried here at uh, the Lusaka Collective. So lots of really wonderful shopping to be had here. And then in the back, once again, a nice little cafe. Um, you can work, you can get some tea, coffee, hang out. Um, but they also will bring in food so you can dine here if you want to try something a little more local. It's just a, a beautiful spot to um, shop and support. And then we have not done this yet, but tomorrow we are going out to the Lilai Elephant Center. It's a little bit further out of town, so we're going to be driving out there. And it's, for me, again, we haven't done it yet, but what I'm kind of thinking of is it's, it's basically like your Daphne Sheldrick experience that you would have in Kenya. Now, you can't interact with the elephants. Um, they're very, very protective of how many people um, can even you know, have that behind the scenes experience. So that's not something that's readily or easily available, um, but it is a wonderful way to be a part of conservation that is going on in Lusaka, in Zambia. And they're basically rehabilitating the elephants before they release them back out, which is why they choose to not have a lot of interaction um, with guests, is specifically so that the elephants are not getting used to to human interaction. So we'll be doing that tomorrow, so keep following along and we'll let you know about that. And then in terms of the COVID experience of getting a test in town, um, one thing I'll say, I think that um, I mentioned this earlier in the last webinar that we did about Zambia, but Zambia has had incredibly low numbers. Africa has had incredibly low numbers when we look at it in comparison to many different places around the world. And they're taking it very seriously, and yet their population has just not been anywhere near as affected as other populations. So they take it seriously when you're going into lodges and when we went shopping, but it really is something where you're gonna be driving around on the streets, and a lot of people, when they're outside, they're not wearing masks, and that's great. I have felt more free here than I have felt in the States. And that is part of why I think encouraging people to come to Africa now is so restorative and rejuvenating because come on, we need to be outside. I know that many of you are dealing with the fires in the States right now. I mean, we want to breathe fresh air, not from behind a mask. Um, so uh, to put that in perspective, uh, I was listening on the radio two days ago. And they basically had 30 odd people in the hospital with COVID related issues out of a population of 17 million, you know, which is almost a rounding error. Yeah. And uh, so it is taken seriously, but it is not something that, I mean, we're more of a danger to the coming here to the local population than they are actually to us. And of course, you know, your interaction, you know, people in the village or the town don't wear a mask, you don't necessarily interact with them. You're basically the people that you interact with are taking it seriously and keeping your guests safe. I mean, we've just kept our distance from everyone. We're not hugging anyone. We're keeping a distance and we're pretty much outside all the time. Even when you're inside, the doors and the windows are open and you've got lots of fresh air coming through. So the reason I say that is that what you see right here in this picture is a facility that's been um, on the ground for local Zambians. Nick has been working with his connections and with the kind of nonprofit organization that has been studying infectious disease in Zambia for well over a decade to set up a completely separate center just for tourists. And that's actually opening tomorrow. And it's going to start having um, tourists coming through on Monday. So we'll have a different photo for you later on because we're gonna see that on our way to the airport on Friday. Um, they have incredible resources that they have been able to call on to make this process one of the most seamless, best experiences that I've come across so far. They already have a very well thought through online booking system. 
you go online and we've got the link that'll be in the trip report, but you go online, you choose your day, your time, you put in your passport, a couple of specific bits of information, you hit confirm, and instantly we had our confirmation with a calendar download. They ask you for your phone number, so I also received a WhatsApp immediately, and then they say we can send you a reminder how many hours before your appointment do you want the reminder? I set mine for two hours and I got it. So again, it's just, it's seamless and very easy. It costs about 150 US dollar and you can pay for that with your credit card. So Nick took us here today and basically you fill out a couple of forms, a little bit of documentation. They wanna know where you're staying, how they contact you, phone number, email, and how you want your test. If you want your test um, texted or sent to you via email on a PDF. We were lucky to actually see one of the test results as well um, from someone who took one a couple of days ago. And it's a one pager, it's got all of their official information, your name, negative, and it states PCR, so that's great. And you can basically choose to either have a nasal swab or to have a throat swab. So this is Yehun getting the throat swab. I went first, I had the nasal swab. We're pretty much here just trying everything. Um, at the end of the day, I would say go for the throat swab if you can. <laughs> um, but really respectful, very um, professional, well done. They're saying that you're gonna get your results within 24 to 48 hours. They've been turning them around within 24 hours, but of course everybody wants to just protect themselves and hedge their bets. So my suggestion to you when you are planning itineraries is to just say the same thing to your clients. You know what, spend two nights in Lusaka or three. It's actually a great little city and that way no one is stressing out about, am I gonna get it in time? Am I gonna get it in time? Um, and so hopefully we will get ours tomorrow morning. And that's it for us. We can um, start answering some of your questions, but basically, cheers to Zambia, cheers to Africa. Seriously, it is so amazing to be here. Get your clients on a plane. It is, it's, it's so, I don't know. It's so rejuvenating to be away from the, the news cycle. It's rejuvenating to be away from standing in line wearing masks. The craziness that's happening around the world all fades away when you're out here. They are the warmest, happiest, welcoming people. Um, we just, I mean, we love it over and over and you're going into two of the most remarkable months to be in Zambia right now. So um, let's make it happen. And let's make it happen by answering your questions. Yeah, and before we answer the questions, Brooke's just finishing, uh, putting the finishing touches to the full trip report as well. So we will send that to you and it will be in a format which you can share with your clients or on your newsletter or on your blogs or website, whatever. Um, you know, so, and, and if you need anything from us to help convince a client or do a conference call or something like that, uh, we may have some limited uh, access next uh, week, but after that we're available and we're there to help you, uh, you know, sell to your clients. We're actually lined up for some already. Um... So for sake of time, I'm not going to try and like read all of the um, questions and, and put them together into one. Let's just get going. Do you want to start from the bottom? Um, thanks. Uh, I was just looking at, yeah. at, the, at the top. Someone, uh, Lindsay was asking how easy it is to put itineraries together. I think we covered that slightly uh, earlier on, but so we know the parameters. Uh, so yeah, ProFlight aren't flying daily to, to South Wangor or to those I'm busy, but we know the days they are flying. So if we're putting an itinerary together for travel in the next two and three months, obviously we are uh, taking all those factors into consideration and recommending uh, the, 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 the exact itinerary that is going to work with the camps that are open, the flights that are running. So, so that one is easy enough when you deal with experts like us who are doing this on a daily basis. So uh, yeah, as long as you know the right contacts in Zambia, you'll be okay. And also we didn't, I, I don't believe that we mentioned this, but please remember that pro flight has pro charter. So it's gonna depend on the client as always, we get that there's a price point and you know, there's usually a break even with a number of people, but pro flight does charter flights and that will get you anywhere in the country that's open on any day. And Jason's plane for sausage tree is actually being run. It's his plane, but it's being run through pro, uh, pro charter. 
Nick, can you get your visa online before you leave home or can you only get it when you land? You can get a visa for Zambia before you leave home, but I always have and currently am advising guests to simply arrive with the requirements in Zambia and buy your visa on entry. Uh, it's very simple. It's, it's what we recommend. So it is possible to get a visa beforehand, but uh, I, I don't recommend it. I recommend you arrive here and, and buy it buy it when you get it. So, so that's, that's interesting. So with that though, because I know that we do have someone who's joined us today from Spain, the other thing to mention is that COVID tests need to be done um, or presented in English. And so keep that in mind if we have some people on the line who've joined us from Mexico, for instance, just make sure that wherever it is that your clients are, that the COVID tests are in English. And if you can't get them in English, then um, either try and have them translated, try and have a doctor's note. And that was the one time, because Nick and I were having a conversation about this, where it might make sense to try and do a visa um, before you arrive is only just if you are in a country where English is not the primary language. And so it might be more difficult. Um, and then Jim, I saw a note from you about trying to get the COVID test in California. Um, also just remember everyone that you do have the option or your clients have the option of the at home kits. They cost more, but there are some that are turning them around with a faster turnaround as well. Okay. Hey, Len, flying into Zambia, that was a few years ago. Um, and all the requirement that Brooke was uh, talking about there, uh, Test COVID test that they had this morning. Um, that is if you're going to a country that requires a, a, a test, a recent test, or if you're flying on Emirates. If you're flying direct home via Addis Ababa or Ethiopia, you won't have to, to, to have that test done in, in Zambia. So, yeah, that's just a, a point on that. Nick, um, will you be open in November, December? Pretty much what, what is open now um, and what we, we mentioned. So you've got sausage tree and potato bush in the Lower Zambezi. Uh, Chongui is also open through November uh, in the Lower Zambezi. In South Rwangwa, again, uh, what is open now will remain open until uh, the end of the year. Chinzomba, Fui Lodge uh, and Kapamba bush camp closes normally in the first week of January, I think. Um, so all of that remains open until the end of the year. Uh, central part of the Kafui, the, the one camp that is currently open in the Busanga Plains in the north of the Kafui, that will close at the end of October. But of all the camps we're talking about being open now, that is the only one that won't be open through to the end of November. And in December, uh, I believe most of the lower Zambezi camps will be closed. The end of, uh, they're open until the end of November, if I have it correct. Speaking about visas, Nick, what about the CASA visa? Is that still available? Or we? <laughs> There's a question. Um, <laughs> question to come up with that one. That's, that's exciting. Um, yeah, I, I see no reason why it shouldn't be. Um, although, as I say that, I can think of a half a dozen reasons why it might not be. Um, yeah, if you're trying to combine. Zimbabwe, Botswana with, with Zambia, that Casa visa should be available. Um, Zimbabwe have slightly tighter restrictions for entry than Zambia. I think they require a test that's no more than 72 hours old. And I don't think Botswana is really very open at the moment. So, yeah, I'd stick to Zambia if I'm. <laughs> We're trying to make it easy. I think for the foreseeable future, the more we're doing this, the more we're learning that, you know, it's almost more practical to stake you to plan a trip for one country at the, at the moment. And as testing before you leave becomes easier, like, for instance, if you want to go to South Africa, come to Zambia for two weeks and then you can, can head over there, you know, with a COVID test, you know, seemingly from the, from the latest information. Uh, but and I, I'll just echo that. I mean, even though we're going on to Zambia, uh, to Uganda, it has not been easy um, to find flight routings that work. It's not every single day that flights are flying. There's like a 19 hour layover on one of the flights. So even though we're doing it, I would never recommend what we're doing for your typical client. We're doing it because it's needed to showcase what it's like to travel in country, in country, in country. But the connecting of multiple countries is going to just be a little bit more difficult for the time being. Going off of Nick, though, the question about what's going to be open in November and December, 
most camps then tend to close down. When will camps reopen in 2021? At the moment, um, dates are dates are usual usual dates. So uh, you have some camps that, that open early. Most most of the remote camps will be opening in in May. At least that's what they're planning at the moment. So virtually all camps um, are planning to be open as normal next year. Um, and uh, because we've repositioned so many bookings from the 2020 season into 2021 dates. Um, we are already experiencing some availability issues with the smaller remote bush camps, um, and that's just a, a, a fact of life. But there are enough options available that uh, I don't find myself writing to anyone saying, no, we simply can't place your clients. We can always come up with alternatives, even if your first choice of camp is, is, uh, is full over the dates that you're looking at. Um, but no, the dates, for opening camps next year at the moment remain as they normally would be for a regular year and we very much hope obviously that that that, that remains the case and that uh, and that people aren't starting to to postpone next year's bookings uh, to any later and and camps are, are are wanting to open up as normal so fingers crossed on that one have you heard any whispers about when klm might start flying into lusaka because as of right now i don't believe they're one of the three airlines that are flying in no klm stopped flying um three or four years ago they, they were flying direct from from uh, amsterdam for for a few years but they haven't offered that route for a, a number of years and the way you route in on klm from europe is to um, nairobi and co-chair with uh, kenyan airways on the Nairobi Lusaka leg. Okay, and then there's a last question about, you know, have all camps flexed their terms and conditions so that if borders close, they can uh, get a refund? And I think, you know, for that, Nick is on top of who's offering what and can really tailor it around that. Nick? Yeah, I mean, all the camps here understand the, the position that international tour operators are in. Um, and in, in, there are laws in Europe that say that if you can't provide the holiday that, uh, that, that you sold, you have to return all the funds. Uh, there's a number of, of operators in the US that have been explaining the, uh, the perils of chargebacks on credit cards to me, which was a new one for me in 2020, but there you go. So yeah, the camps are well aware of all of that um, and, uh, and, and are offering uh, to return deposits or almost all of them are. There's a couple, I was talking to an owner of a few camps in Zambia just a couple of days ago who insists that he will be retaining his deposit um, and offering credits for future travel. And I explained to him that that might damage his, his new 2021 inquiries. He was happy with that um, and I'm happy to, uh, to direct uh, operators that book through me as to which camps uh, are the ones that we really should be supporting uh, and that will support you in return by, uh, by being very flexible in the terms of it. I think that's sort of the bottom line that, uh, you know, Nick's on top of all of that and has a whole team around him. And, you know, any of those questions, feel free to reach out to Nick. Um, also feel free to obviously reach out to Brooke and I if you have anything still uh, that's not clear from this. And as we are going on to Uganda, we will also, uh, you know, keep posting for any of you that follows us uh, on social. And in the follow up to this, I'll send you links to our Facebook and Instagram as well, if you kind of want to see the day to day. Do you have something, Brooke? Well, yeah. So, okay. There's another question that we haven't um, addressed yet. What happens if you show COVID symptoms? What about quarantine and medical attention? So I'm going to let Nick handle that, but I'll also say we asked all of the different camps that we went to similar questions and, you know, they're handling it in different ways. Um, even things like just as a, for instance, time and tide Chinzambo, um, they have their staff on a one month rotation. So the staff gets tested before they even get to camp and then they stay there for a month and then they rotate out. And then other properties will, you know, they're testing their um, teams, as Johan mentioned, three times a day. And they've got testing, not temp temperature. Right, 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 temperature testing. And they are um, doing the same thing of keeping kind of like a core group together. For instance, Sindabese, they've got a smaller team that's on and then another team that's on. So they're taking care of their, um, 
their teams. And then they also have different areas for clients if they do need, but Nick can definitely address more of what happens if somebody shows symptoms or needs attention. Uh, COVID-19 in Zambia, as with pretty much anywhere across the world at the moment, is a notifiable disease. So it is necessary that, uh, that the government be handed information if you test positive. Um, in Zambia, if you test positive on a screening test, uh, that information will be given to the Ministry of Health and you are supposed to admit yourself to uh, a government approved facility. Uh, my advice to tourists here, if they show symptoms and believe that they need medical attention and hospitalization, uh, then my advice would be to choose uh, one of three or four uh, private hospitals here in Lusaka that are of a, a, a high international standard. Um, get into one of those hospitals, explain the situation, they will start treating you uh, and they will admit you. They will then test you. And if they test you as an inpatient, then they can keep you within their facility and you won't have to move to, to a government or a government approved facility. So that, that is my advice to anyone here in Zambia that has symptoms and who feels that they need attention and, and to be hospitalized. Obviously, if, if you uh, uh, feel that you may be, uh, may be testing positive, but you're asymptomatic, um, my advice probably would be uh, not to get tested, but uh, I don't know. Um, so yeah, there, there, there are hospital, private hospitals here in Lusaka uh, that, are, that are very good. And as Johan mentioned a few minutes ago, we have very, very few people well, in hospital at the moment in Zambia, thankfully, uh, that, that, that are positive with COVID. And we were talking to doctors this morning and they don't know why, but we're all happy that that is the case, but they don't really fully understand why. Well, the, the, the real message still remain. I mean, you can have a wonderful safari. I think the risk is low. The risk is lower than going to Whole Foods in Boulder, in my opinion. Um, and yes, I mean, Zambia is open. There's still time for your avid safari goers to, you know, who can move quicker and have that flexibility to have that once in a lifetime experience. And yeah, so we wrapped this up. I just, I have to answer two more questions because they're near and dear to my heart. So Kay, my shirt is from Senegal, thank you. And yes, Yehun had his shirt made, not bought. And that was because of an experience actually in Zambia two years ago, where a lodge totally and absolutely ironed um, a safari shirt, as we all know that it melts. So we had our neighbor um, patch it up <laughs> and it ended up you know, coming out this good. And so now he's had every single one of his shirts done this way. And here in Lusaka, when we went to go and meet with one of my favorite designers and I bought a couple of dresses from her, we just kind of ruffled through the sacks of all of the scraps and got two more different scraps for two new shirts that he bought. So this is very much a Johan original, um, but yeah, everything is, <laughs> is somehow sourced from or made in Africa. And I'll give you the information for Senegal for when you get out there. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. We really appreciate your time. And as I mentioned, I'll send everyone's contacts out again. Reach out. We're there to help. We're there to, you know, make, uh, want to do whatever we can for you to, you know, get your clients to travel to Zambia and to Africa in general. So thank you again. And I will put a recording of this up on YouTube and send you the link as well and feel free to share it with anyone. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful rest of the day out there. Thanks for your time, Nick, and thanks everyone for joining thanks, us Nick. today. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Thank you.